This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level Zero NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. Ah, uh, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at that man and you're thinking, that man is white. And he is. That man is white. <laughs> That's how we're starting the episode. I, yeah, I, yeah. You know. Quest of Bear is white. He is. He's a white man. Yeah, there's little ethnic man. ambiguity there. Yeah, he's he's like from close to that Germanic influenced area, though, of Sp of Spielberg. Yeah. Spielberg yeah, just over the mountains from Spielberg. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. definitely no more than, I'm going to say, a sixteenth of anything interesting at all in his entire genetic history. He's very, <laughs> he's of, yeah, he is of that stock, the mountain stock. As you read one of the books, you believe that with a little study, you could learn how to swim rather well. From a book, you say? Wow. Sure, why not, right? I've never learned anything from a book. Goodbye. Oh, I forget what this guy's voice is. He's old, <laughs> generically old, I think. Is it okay, Stan, just to shut up? The right to rule him is good way to pick a king. Better than most, anyway. It is not, fa. It is really mm, not. I disagree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I thought he might have something to say about merfolk. I'm apparently wrong about that. That assertion is incorrect. This guy's a big old useless hump of shit. Hump of shit. Hump I'm now. I'm now wondering. What have I learned from a book? Certainly words. I've expanded my vocabulary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Occasionally facts. Yeah, no, I guess I've learned some things from books. Over I've the learned years. some stuff from books too, but I feel you know. that I've learned few lessons. Facts and words. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly like how to recognize when a story sucks. <laughs> I think is what I've learned. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, uh, hey, hey everybody. I've, I've learned which books I prefer. I guess I've learned yeah. that from books. That helps. That I like helps. them sad and dense. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. That's kind of your bag. I like some sad, dense prose. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, a little there, Cormac there, McCarthy. Yeah, you need some disturbing with that sad. Yeah. Yeah. A little, an, an element of horror. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome, uh, welcome back. Listen, I'm sorry about last week, but uh, I, I, you know, I don't even remember why I canceled. <laughs> it's a really beautiful day, man. The stars are smiling on us. Erasmus and Chakra are sleeping like babies, and soon they'll get better, man. That Leith water was just the fucking shit, dude. Okay. Oh, hey, we have more things to, sit to talk to Salim about, so here we go! Hey, have you ever noticed how the stars shine brighter when good karma's in the air, man? It doesn't, but go on. The weird thing is I still can't figure out what makes the drug work, right? It's got some stuff that definitely didn't come from nature, man. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean when I say it didn't come from nature? You, you, know mean it's, I mean? you mean it's supernatural. We live in a magical world. I don't know why everyone's so fucked up about that all the time. One of your yeah. patients is a wizard. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. My wife I is cast a, spells regularly. My wife is a tree. <laughs> I've come to accept that about her. <laughs> anyway, I've been studying the candy some more, man. It's like really weird. Like somehow like the drug is made a is made, you know, it's not grown. Usually something that powerful can only come from mama nature man but in this case i have no idea what it could be none zero zip zilch <laughs> dick dick it's just roofies it's roofies yeah I, I don't know what it is man i don't know where it comes from you know oh strange stuff man i'm sure it wasn't a plant though i it was like some sort of uh I don't know, what's the word? Chemical or something, you know? I found little bits of tomato in there, but tomatoes are not natural. <laughs> and, uh, 
You know, they probably make a nice contrast to the chocolate too, man. You know? Chocolate, yeah, if tomatoes. You, chocolate and tomatoes. If you put tomatoes yeah. under a microscope, they have no cellular structure. <laughs> they just look the same. <laughs> Unnatural, man. If you put them under an electron microscope, they don't have any, like, atoms. You know, yeah, man, no... I don't know. I don't get it's it. It's why you can't statically charge a tomato. <laughs> no molecules. No atoms. That's right, man. <laughs> no atoms. So unnatural. Oh, shit, man. That lethe water is great shit, man. Clean, clear, totally natural, man. It's just what Erasmus and Chakra needed to help clean out that totally yucky natural drug, man. That stuff really did it. Really did the fucking trick, man. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, peace. If you find out who made that bummer drug... Have a serious talk with them, man. They need some help to straighten themselves out. You know? Kill me. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us the water of Lith. Erasmus and Chakra are now sleeping peacefully. In time, they will be fully healed of the drug's effects. I am feeling... Well... <laughs> Erasmus and Chakra are on the path to recovery, and now I can finally rest again as well. He's really deflecting from the questions about her. <laughs> we still do not fully understand the sleep drug, although the waters of the Leth seem to have cured its effects. I could find no trace of magic in the candy, and yet it acted almost magical. On its victims. Like me, a victim. <laughs> <laughs> the water of the Lithia will have many magical properties. Chakra and Erasmus will sleep for a long while, but when they awake, the drug will have cleansed from their bodies, unlike when I awoke and it has been a screaming nightmare ever since. She's just screaming in tree. Be careful. This is actually something that is happening constantly around you. It's a good thing that humans can't hear the frequency in which trees scream, because well, it would just be a nightmare. Yeah, when he was trying to rescue Julinar, who had been turned into a tree, we all realized pretty quickly that he had picked the wrong tree, and now there was just a just the soul of a regular tree masquerading as a human, covetous as it was of sort of warmth and motion. Um... But, you know, the cruel irony is that he actually realized his mistake by now. But he actually prefers tree Julinar. So now the tree is, you know, longing for the feeling of her roots in the soil and for the years passing her by just un She can, like, she can feel herself aging as if she's on fire. That's com comparatively what it's like. It's and why the, she's... Like, it's, yeah, she didn't, she didn't know that the warmth of being a mammal would be like being on fire. How brief and horrible and painful life is. Um, but, you know, it's, it's too late, you know? It's too late. That's uh, irony for you. It's, just, yeah. it's a real genie wish situation. It's why, real, she's real monkey's paw. it's why she's constantly sitting on that wooden chair so she can be close to something <laughs> recognizable so she doesn't go fucking mad. Every time she stands, like, she didn't realize that when people walk around, they're just falling, just <laughs> kicking their legs out, losing their balance and catching themselves. It's Her just, just, yeah. It's just constant vertigo and the sound of warm, hot blood in her ears. It's a just, real nightmare. Real oh, nightmare. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go see our girl! We sure are. I'm not sure if we'll get anything of value out of it, but... Welcome again to my garden. Enjoy a moment of beauty when you can. I know that you are very busy. I managed to forget every time that you chose as a voice for her high school recitation. <laughs> Public speaking assignment. I can tell by your seriousness that there is something on your mind. What troubles you so, my friend? Nothing. Nothing useful. I've already extended. I've already gone through all of our dialogue options. So. Lick my mushrooms. 
Put your tongue right on him. Put your whole fucking mouth on one. Mm. <laughs> they're good. They're good. They're fucking, they're fucking good. It's, interest, it's interesting that she speaks normally in her improvised lines. <laughs> but then as oh, yeah. soon as the plot advances, she just lapses into this weird, like, you know, in front of the school auditorium. That would be that would be a hell of a uh, of a of a like a shitty mutant superpower to know that when your important dialogue is, and to know when your non important dialogue is, <laughs> like every important conversation, to be able to very accurately <laughs> gauge the gravity of a situation. It's when it's you like have being speak about it. It's like being able to see the studio audience. Yes. Exactly. Like, no one else can, but you are aware when the narrative eye is upon you. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. It's interesting that she succumbs in those moments to stage fright, though. That's, that's, uh... <laughs> it's like that character from One Piece who mm-hmm. can bring drawings to life, but really sucks at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so all his, all his summonings are just, like, desperately trying to live and move. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what are we gonna do here is there any way through this uh, detect magic I guess start. okay cool that was not unexpected your status as a hero makes you magical does it I don't know if that's true oh. depends on the work. story really Oh god. oh god. Oh god. I think that still works. <laughs> oh wait. They just they just float there like goldfish. <laughs> were we sure that they were gonna hurt us? <laughs> uh maybe. I think so. You've invented frozen fish. Unfortunately, the sudden icy blast blows the fish into bait sized chunks. Gross, they were people. They were people. You enter the blackness of the tunnel. Fortunately, they, you see look, that the passageway rules are illuminescent. People. Well, okay, fair enough. Well, like first of all, if someone's we establish if someone's half animal, you don't, don't go around calling them people. You're gonna get punched across the room. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also, they a... haven't said anything yet. These could just be animals with beards, you know, trimmed beards and tools. I. <laughs> Yorkshire Terriers are like that, so why not? <laughs> yeah, these could be very well-trained pets. I love the idea that we're here to negotiate peace with the Queen of Atlantis, and we're just fucking up all of her guards. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. She started it. <laughs> what did, who did she kill exactly? Nobody. Oh, yeah, okay, fair. Let's get them all. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't paying that much attention. Neither was I. What do we do? Double up. There. You cast Calm. Oh my god. I don't have to kill as many of them. That was a very heroic thing you did. Was it? Yeah. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, that guy. That I mean, it's the cool. underwater level. We're none of us that invested. I'm sure that guy's not going to hurt us. I appreciate this rippling effect that they did. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Oh, here comes the remora. Alright. Hmm, no response. Do you think it's because you're about to be fucked up? Did you really think the people of Atlantis would just leave the door open for you? That was cool. there. You're a That's wizard. Good. Titans, destroy the Enchudia. A quiet feeling of calmness infuses the sea. Yes, they fuck you up real bad. <laughs> you calmed most of them, but not all of them. <laughs> oh, they, you, uh, you killed one, one of the calmed ones went down. 
This is such a diplomatic disaster. I love it. Well, it's like you cast the comm spell and they stopped, but like two of them passed their will saves or whatever and just instantly bit it along with one of the stunned people. Oh, 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 here he comes. What the hell is happening? <laughs> oh. Okay, the queen was not turning into a dragonfish, I see. Enough of this bloodshed. You defeated the people of Atlantis there, brother. What do you demand of us? <laughs> Ooh. Sea <laughs> <C> Texas. <laughs> Greet the queen of Atlantis. Hello! Why, why have you brought death and destruction to the waters of Atlantis? I ask ye. Who are you? I'm Hippolyta, the queen of Atlantis. If you kill me, you will die, and all of Atlantis will be destroyed. <laughs> why will I die? Well, I don't want to get. I don't also, get why into does that. it? Why will Atlantis be destroyed? Hey, is she load bearing? I'm load bearing. She's a load bearing queen. <laughs> <laughs> the city is just <laughs> resting on her. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, just don't do it. I gave you two. She's like mother brain. I gave you two reasons not to kill me. Is that not enough for you? Am I just gonna die because like I don't have enough time for the escape sequence? Like, I I, that... I would prefer not to get into it at this time. Because <laughs> I also have this magic magnet that would just totally bring me back to. Yeah, I don't think you'd have enough time to use it between <laughs> you and me. <laughs> Giving her a a yokel voice is. Really interesting. <laughs> I'm a queen. Because it, it, if I think if your civilization was underwater, I think there might be a backwoods element to it. Because like, <laughs> it'd be so hard to conduct like science experiments in a fluid environment. Like you'd have to like generate pockets of air. Like I think it would really or, or like electronics. Like if you needed to build a television from scratch, but you're born under the sea, <laughs> like. Inventions and everything would be really, you know, stunted. We Progress, found a I think, way. would be slowed. We really did, do did it. Did they ever address that in SpongeBob SquarePants? Never. No, it was kind of glossed over. Everything just kind of worked. Right, right. Okay. Not really a show I watched. It was sort of, you know, beyond my time, so. There was a few episodes where they, you know, were out of the water and, you know, drying out. And it was funny, but also disturbing and in uh, sort of uh, Arnold taking off his helmet on the surface of Pluto sort of way. Uh, I what I what I like about this is that she doesn't have an NPC portrait. She has an enemy portrait. <laughs> That's true. She's got a head far. It's great. I, mean, I suppose I have to have the opportunity to kill her maybe. Anyway, let's talk about the war. Silmaria declared war upon us by killing my people. We had been at peace for generations. Then ships from around Sumaria began attacking the Tritons and whatnot. Thus, we armed for war and returned violence with violence. As you've done to us now. Cause it's, uh, I knew that guy. That guy was my friend. I'm just kidding. I, did, I don't know his name, but he's dead. He, uh, his, he doesn't have a name now. He was a he's guard. A now. He was my He was a thing. He was my guard, though. Anyway, <laughs> so you'd be the king of Silmaria, eh? You begin your reign with the blood of my people upon your hands. That's nice. That's nice. I bet. Yeah. I bet a lot of people would love you for that. I mean, let's call it a show of force. Yeah. All right. You demand peace after all the blood you shed here. Well, all right. There'll be peace then. This peace will remain until the blood of my people shed again by those of the land. I mean, it was a really strong hand that you showed. Where, like, you just stopped all of our guards from fighting and then killed everyone. <laughs> take, take, take this statue and it, it'll be a symbol, right? And so we've accepted the air breather's demand for peace. I, sorry, I called it an air breather. Anyway, uh, you got the price of defeat. So go, go uh, return to your own land and leave us the fuck alone. You were scored out of Atlantis. Wait, I, wanted to, I was hoping to loot those bodies first. But nope. That probably would have been gauche. <laughs> Can I just take this guy's stuff real quick? I 
That's what I, we do up. <laughs> all right, you can have peace. Tritons, get them out of here. And they just, they're all dead. Just start looting their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, what's she gonna do? Stop me? That was easy. She was really Actually, open to that. Yeah. We we did there leave. There must have been a more diplomatic way to do that. But we did leave two of them alive outside. I guess. Yeah, they, that's they, true. they might have escorted us out of there. They did attack us first. It's true. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I didn't instigate that fight. I just opened their door with magic. Yeah. Magic. 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 That's also how you anger bees. With magic? With magic? Well, opening their door. Magic or otherwise. (laughs) Yeah. You should have used smoke on them. Like bees. (laughs) (laughs) Fill the sea with smoke. (laughs) I've got a I've got a great plan to infiltrate Atlantis. I'm just gonna smoke them out. It just <laughs> the sea starts to bubble, and then millions of fish just start floating to the surface, dead. They've got air in their lungs from all the underwater smoke. That's lovely. Just sea and whales, and then gradually mer people, and then that's it. Peace with Atlantis. I mean, you can't be at war with a uh, with an opponent that isn't living anymore. No, that's true. This this was a very Crusader King's way to get peace, honestly. Well, you know, it needed to happen. Um, yeah. We have both a question for Glory and a question for Krull. Ooh. That's excellent. Lay them on me. Do we want to do that next episode? Uh, we certainly can. Are we gonna are we gonna stop around the twenty minute mark today? Holy shit! This would be a this would be a first time in a long time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's treat ourselves to a Sorry, twenty minute everyone. episode. Miss a week. Now it's a short one. See you next episode. It's not a short.